readings from Luke chapter 7, verses 11 to 19, and that's on page 839 of the Pew Bibles. Soon afterwards, he went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went with him. As he approached the gate of the town, a man who had died was being carried out. He was his mother's only son, and she was a widow, and with her was a large crowd from the town. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion for her and said to her, Do not weep. Then he came forward and touched the bier, and the bearers stood still, and he said, Young man, I say to you, rise. The dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him to his mother. Fear seized all of them, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has arisen among us, and God has looked favorably on his people. This word about him spread throughout Judea and all the surrounding country. In this is the gospel of the Lord. Now, I don't know if this encounter between Jesus and the widow of Nain happened exactly as Luke described it or not. But I know that this story is true. This morning, let's discern the outlines of its truth under two headings. Firstly, seeing. When Jesus saw the widow, he had compassion for her. And secondly, the heading, unexpected new life. The dead man sat up and spoke, and Jesus gave him to his mother. These two headings will help us navigate the theme of pastoral care, which is our focus in this month of worship. First heading, seeing. What does seeing mean in the gospel? I've included a little reflection from Michael Lunig on the front page of your notices. This is going to help us comprehend seeing. God, let us be serious face to face, heart to heart. Let us be fully present, the closest we may come to innocence. Now, seeing obviously involves the physical capacity to perceive the physical world around us. But in a gospel sense, seeing is much more. And the much more, Lunig is giving us a window into. Seeing someone is allowing them, actually more than allowing them, encouraging them to be fully present to you. To be fully present. And also then you yourself can be fully present to the other person. So it follows in a gospel sense. If someone is anxious, defended, worried about what you will make of them, then you can't see them. Being fully present is more challenging and more rewarding than we imagine. 
Another quote, this time from the Jungian psychologist Eric Neumann. All human societies at all times are interested in instructing their members in techniques of not looking, of overlooking, and of looking the other way. Why is he saying that? There's a whole book I'm reading which explores it. But in essence, it's because if we do look and see, if we do engage people fully, we may see more than we want or more than we think we can cope with. We will see messiness, we will see pain, we will see jagged edges, we will see things that we may think are unacceptable. And there'll be a terrible question. Do you fit in? And if you don't, maybe I don't. So it's better according to social mores, to overlook rather than to see. It takes a lot of courage and a lot of loving and a lot of tenderness to be fully present to each other. We are all on a spectrum. We're all caught up hoping we can be fully present drawn towards the Michael Lunig understanding and yet also pulled the other way towards Eric Neumann's rather sobering insight. How will we engage each other? Will we see? Will we be fully present to each other? It's frequently stated in the Gospels that Jesus saw a particular person, just like the widow from Nain. And we can take this as a sign that he was willing to be fully present to the pain, the grief, the jagged edges of her life. So that day he saw a widow and a bereaved mother. He saw her grief. And if you read my blog this week, you'll comprehend he saw other things as well. He saw that she was facing imminent social destitution. Widows had no support in first century Palestine. And seeing her, he had compassion. The word compassion in Greek is very strong. It means more literally something like his guts were twisted in a knot. He saw her grief, her loss, and his guts were twisted in a knot. So we uncover the first truth of this story. Loving, or we might call it good pastoral care, involves seeing other people. And that means being fully present to them. And them being encouraged to be fully present to us. Messiness, jaggedness, failure, all the things that make up human life. And seeing, we have compassion. We allow our guts to be twisted in a knot. Not sympathy, not disdain, not superficial glossing over, not an opportunity to say, well, gee, um, that's bad, but I can tell you something that's even tougher. 
that happened to me. None of those things. Compassion. People sometimes say to me, I wonder if anyone actually sees me. It's a deep cry from the heart to be fully present. Do people actually see me? In good pastoral care, we are seen. The other day I went to the skin doctor for my annual checkup. I've been going to this practice for 20 years, but it was a new doctor there. Very friendly. And she said, oh, what do you do for a living? I said, oh, I'm a minister of the Uniting Church just down the road. She immediately said, thank you for your service. And I nearly fell backwards. I was no longer a patient. I was a fellow human and she commented on ministry and medicine alike vocations for the service of others. She saw something. I've never had that experience before when I've said I'm a minister. Thank you for your service. Seeing is absolutely essential in good pastoral care. Second heading, unexpected new life. Last year, as many of you will recall, Arthur Botell was in the sand for many weeks before he died. On several occasions, I rang up Edith and offered to drive her up to the sand. I was surprised to discover that I had to get on the back of a queue. Margaret Party, Val Ray Boxhall and many others had already made that offer and I had to get on the end of the queue. And Edith had to look through her diary. Yes, look, I think I could fit you in next week, Michael, on Thursday. If you'd like to take me um, up to the sand, that would be lovely. This was but one sign of a magnificent network of pastoral care that went into action when Arthur was struggling for his life. It was quiet and so effective. Seeing this, I was humbled and moved. And I felt so proud to be minister of this church. Arthur was dying and yet woven into his dying was love, concern and compassion. The Gospel text from Luke 7 underlines the power of such loving. It can even bring new life. One of the curious features of this text is it focuses far more on the bereaved mother and widow than it does on her son, who was raised back to life. You would think the latter would be the focus of attention, but actually it's not. It's the woman. And Jesus effects in her a change of status. She was a widow and a bereaved mother. But because Jesus saw her and had compassion on her, she was restored to her status as a mother. Now, in first century Palestinian society, you had standing because of your relationships 
not the individual sense we have, but because of how you were related to others. And, sadly, it was relationships to men that mattered, not other women. How you were related to men gave you a place in the society in which Jesus lived. So she's lost her husband, she's lost her son, she has lost connection with any significant men, she becomes a nobody. So the focus of the text is not so much on the son being raised back to life, though it's part of it, but that she becomes a mother. And she's restored to standing. And she can literally survive, whereas without that, that would be a question. Jesus gave him to his mother. It's a really interesting expression. He re-established her. Good pastoral care brings unexpected new life which can change a person's status. Many people see themselves as victims in our world, subject to external forces over which they have no control. Good pastoral care can help to change that that a person is enabled to move from being a victim to a participant, someone engaged in the community. As we follow the way and the teachings of Jesus, we are reminded all people have yet more potential to rise to their full stature as co-creators with God, co-creators of a world of love and tenderness, of being fully present, a world of justice and peace. As we follow the way and the teachings of Jesus, we uncover spiritual resources that encourage us, well, it's probably stronger than that, constrain us to engage others with more compassion. We are doing that here at Gordon. We have much to celebrate in pastoral care here in this community. I don't know if the encounter between Jesus and the widow of Nain happened exactly as Luke described it. But I do know this, and this is the truth, that compassion raises people to life. Good pastoral care raises people to life. Amen.